Welcome to our place value and conversions review. Let's go over some of the things that we need to review for our place value and conversions review for our flip video. Remember, if you have any questions, you can ask myself or you can ask Mrs. Drake. All right, let's move on. Place value. So what is place value? Place value is the value given to a digit because of the place it has in the number. In decimals, decimal numbers, all places are fractions with denominators. So a decimal can always be converted to a fraction. And remember that the denominator for a decimal is always going to be in values of 10, either 10 or 100. Let's look at this place value chart. And look, I love it right here because they have it as a, they have it as broken down as a fraction and as a decimal place. So we have the 10. And for a tenth, you have one out of 10. So that's what the value of a tenth is. So, and then we have one hundredth, okay? So if you think about this like money, this is going to be worth six tenths, which is also the same as 60 hundredths, okay? Six tenths or 60 hundredths. Then if I move the six over here, I have to put a zero in front and then it changes the value. So this is six hundredths, which is worth six cents. Or I can have 60 hundredths or six tenths and that's worth 60 cents. So you have to look at the value of it. And think about money sometimes whenever you're trying to compare and order decimals. Now. This is your decimal. This is a unit, but it would be a ones. So anything to the right of the decimal is part of a whole. And anything to the left of the decimal is a whole number, and you have to remember that. Can you do this? Yes, you can, and it doesn't change the value. But if you do this, that does change the value because you're changing places. Okay? So always have a mental place value in your head when you're talking about decimals. All right, let's practice. This is one hundredth. So this is one out of one hundred squares. This is one tenth. Look at how much is filled in. One hundredth, one tenth. One tenth means that you fill in ten of these hundredths. So you can say ten hundredths or one-tenth, but this is different. One-hundredth is one out of one hundred. And if you think about it, when you say one-hundredth, you're saying the word hundred. So think about out of a hundred. And when you say one-tenth, you're saying the word ten. So think of out of ten. Whoops, sorry, having some technical difficulties here today. All right, let's practice. And you can't really see my number down here at the bottom see if I can move this down. Whoops, changed it. All right. Let's talk about whole numbers and decimal numbers. So this is 4,782. This is 236,478. This is nine holes and 67 hundredths. And this is supposed to be 22 holes and five tenths. Okay, I've kind of shrunk it a little bit so you can see that one. Let me unlock it and see if I can move it up. There we go. Now I can go back to full screen. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to order these numbers. Well, if you look here, you always start over here to the right. Eight and two, and you start comparing the numbers, okay? So... Right here, I have numbers right here all the way to the 236,000. So I automatically know that that's bigger because 236,000 is bigger than 4,000. So I'm going to write 236,478. Then I'm going to look. 4,000 is clearly bigger than 9 holes or 22 holes. So I'm going to go 4,782. And then I'm going to look here. 
I actually, sorry, need to start over here to the left. I made a mistake. I'm looking, this has a, another number in the tens place, and this has a number in the ones place. So automatically the number is going to go right here because it's got one extra digit, and then nine holes and 67 hundredths. Now, if you're doing decimals, put a zero behind this number if you have two, dec two numbers after the decimal and two numbers. It does not change the value. It is okay to put a zero after it. It is not okay when you're doing decimals to put a zero before it, but it is okay to put one after it. So let's put these numbers in order from least to greatest. Well, this number is a decimal, but it only has one number after it, so I'm going to put another number. This 34 right here doesn't have a decimal at all, so I can do this, and it doesn't change the value. This is $34 with a decimal after it or not with a decimal after it. It doesn't matter. Now it makes it easier to decide which number is larger. Okay, so first I've got 34 and 9 hundredths, and I have 34. Well, there's an extra digit here. The 34 and 9 hundredths makes that bigger. Because the 3 is the same, the 4 is the same, the 0 is the same, but the 9 in the thousandths place is, or in the hundredths place is bigger. So that's how I know that that's bigger. Then 34. And now I have to go and look at 22. Clearly that's bigger. Made that easy. 22 and 34 hundredths. Now I have 18 and 1 tenth, or 10 hundredths, and 18 and 9 hundredths. Well, yeah, there's a 1 here, but look, there's a 0 here. Just because this has a 9, look at what place it's in. It's in the hundredths place. This 10 is in the tenths place. So that makes 18 bigger than 18 and 9 Hundredths. 18 and 1 tenth is bigger than 18 and 9 hundredths. So put that zero on the end because if you left it off, you might get confused. So make sure to add decimals if you need to with zeros. Remember, zero in front changes the value. Zero behind does not change the value. All right, let's move on to um, our conversions. Okay, so we have fly to horse, divide, of course. Horse to fly, multiply. So, I'm going to do just fly to horse right now, which is divide, of course. So, I have got 48 inches. Well, how many inches are in a foot? 12. So, I'm going to do, this is fly to horse, divide, of course. So, I'm going to take 48 and divide it by 12, which is 4. Now, I've got, again, Fly to horse, divide, of course. I have millimeters is smaller than centimeters, so I have to take 50, and how many millimeters are in a centimeter? That's 10, so I have to take 50 and divide it by 10, and that's 5. I love to put the a F and the H so I can remember the rhyme and divide. So how many feet are in a yard? That's 3. So I'm doing 36 divided by 3, which is 12. Then this is fly to horse, divide, of course. 73, how many inches are in a foot? That would be 12. I cannot do 73 divided by 12 evenly. It doesn't work. But what I can do is 73 divided by 12 is 9 with a remainder of, sorry, it's not 9, it's 8. Because 8 times 12 is 72. And then, I'm sorry, no. It's 6. Sorry, it's not 8. It's 6. So 6 times 12 is 72. So I know that I have 6 with a remainder of 1. But instead of my remainder of 1, that 1 is just 1 inch. So I'm going to go 6 feet, 1 inch. Okay, so the remainder of one is going to be inches. So whenever you're using it for um, conversions, you have to put inches. Then, pints to quarts. Fly to horse, divide, of course. 16 pints into quarts. Well, how many quarts are in a pint, or how many pints are in a quart, sorry? 
the pints that are in a quart are going to be 2. So I have to take 16 divided by 2, and that is 8. This is fly to horse, divide, of course, quarts to gallons. So there are 4 quarts in 1 gallon. I take 12 divided by 4, and that is 3. So that's our fly to horse. Now we're going to do horse to fly, which is multiply. So now we are on to horse to fly multiply. Okay, so feet are bigger than inches, so that's horse to fly. How many inches are in a foot? You can look at your conversion chart. That would be 12, so 3 times 12 is 36. So there are 36 inches in a foot. How many kilometers are in a meter? Well, we know that this is horse to fly multiply. And I want to see you doing this, horse to fly multiply. So kilometers to meters, that would be 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So 3 times 1,000 is going to be 3,000. Again, quarts to cups. This is horse to fly multiply. But if you look, it does not tell you how many um, cups are in a quart. So we have to go to pints first. And I have to say three times two pints equals six. So now I'm at six pints. Then I have to take my six pints and multiply that by two to give me cups. So six times two is 12. So you see I had to do a double conversion. Go from quarts to pints, then pints to cups. How many gallons are in a pint? Or how many pints are in a gallon? Sorry, well we don't know that, but this is horse to fly, multiply. I know that I can go from gallons to quarts. So there are four quarts in a gallon. So I have to go four times two equals eight quarts. Then I'm going to go from quarts to pints. And I know there are two pints in every quarts. So eight times two is 16. So there are 16 pints in two gallons. There are 12 cups in three quarts. Yards to feet. Well, this is horse to fly multiply. Four, there are three feet in every yard. So four times three is 12. And yards to feet again, I know this is horse to fly, multiply. There are two, I'm doing two yards. There are three feet in every yard, so there is six because three times two is six. So please watch this video as many times as you need to and let Mrs. Drake or myself know if you need any help converting or any help with decibels. Have a great day.